Now, Maya is a texturing and rendering package in addition to being a modeling and animation package. And there are times when you want to preview what you're lighting, texturing, rendering in the viewport before you actually go to render. Now, Maya has a number of different options that allow you to pre-visualize your rendering before you actually go to rendering. Now, a lot of these are actually held in the viewport shading options. So, for example, we could go to wireframe and that would actually just show us the wires or the outlines of the objects that we're working with. If I want, I can go into smooth shade. And what that does is basically gives me rough color. And it also shows me the actual objects themselves. So it actually allows some shading. One option that I really like is called wireframe unshaded. And that's kind of the combination of both of those. It allows you to view the wires, but with shading. So you can actually see where all of your vertices and edges are in your models, but also see the actual result of those with shading. It's a lot easier to visualize things. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. There's other options you can have. And another nice one is called X-Ray. And what this does is allows you to kind of see through stuff and kind of an X-Ray view. This is great for modeling if you want to actually kind of visualize what you're modeling, but you still need to see all the wires and you need to see everything. This is a really great way to work with that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Many times when you want to be working with textures and actually see the textures on the objects that you're working with, we can turn those on by going all the way down here to something called hardware texturing. So if I turn that on, you can see I've got some textures on the carpet, the pictures on the walls, and then there's like a background image to show what's behind the windows, that sort of thing. And so I can actually turn those on or off. There's some keyboard shortcuts that probably can make this a lot easier for you. And those are four, five, and six. And let me show you what those do. When I hit four, it goes to wireframe mode so I can see the wires. When I hit number five, it goes to flat shaded mode. Number six goes to hardware texture mode. So four, five, six, four, five, six. Much easier than digging through the menus in any viewport. So in addition to shading, we also have lighting. So we can actually just use what's called the default lighting, which is just kind of this generic flat lighting, or we can use the actual lights in the scene. So when I turn this on, you can actually get kind of a idea as to how the lighting is going to look in this scene. And in fact, if you look up here, we've got four lights up here and then another little light down here. So I've got a total of five lights in the scene, and this is the lighting that they create. Now, in addition to lighting, we can also view shadows. So if I want, I can come down here and turn on shadows, and you can actually see how the shadows work with this particular scene. Now, the next menu over here is called Show. And what this does is it allows us to turn on and off specific types of objects in the scene. So let's say you're modeling and you're working with all the NURB surfaces, you may want to turn off other things that are getting in the way. So you kind of clean out your scene and just view those things that you're working with at that particular time. So you can just turn things on and off by type. So for example, if I turned off lights, you wouldn't see the lights. See how those kind of disappeared, but the lighting still works. So the actual effect of the lights works, you just don't see them in the scene. So they don't clutter things up. So if I turn them back on, you can see how they come on. The next one is actually kind of important. We've got one here called Renderer. This just determines the quality of the rendering that you have in the scene. So right now we have what's called default quality rendering, which is what we're seeing. We also have another one called high quality rendering. And that actually gives you a much better quality rendering. Now notice how the shadows and the lighting look a lot more realistic. In fact, if I zoom in here, you can see I've got kind of this semi-transparent shadow on that coffee table, which I wasn't getting before. So this high quality rendering actually will give you a much better idea as to what your final render will look like. The one issue with this is that it is graphics card dependent. So the better the graphics card, the better this rendering will look and a lower level graphics card might not show it as well. But for a scene of this caliber, you probably can get away with high quality rendering on almost any graphics card. There's an additional renderer, and this is called Viewport 2.0,
what this does is it can get you even better quality lighting. But again, it makes even more demands on the graphics card. And another thing you need to be aware of with Viewport 2.0 is that some functions within Maya don't show up when you're rendering in that method. So some things may not seem to work properly. It's because they're not currently supported in the Viewport 2.0 renderer. So for the best compromise for me is to go into high quality rendering and use that. There's one more keystroke that I want to show you. Remember how we did four, five, and six to show wireframe, flat shade, textures. And if you go seven, you go to high quality rendering. So actually we have four keystrokes right along the top of the keyboard. So four, five, six, and seven. And those are basically just increasing levels of quality in how you render a viewport. Now every viewport renders by itself. So for example, I could have one here rendered in high quality rendering and here I could do one in wireframe or flat shaded. So each individual viewport has its own rendering style. So you can actually mix and match these if you have multiple viewports available. So those are some of the options for viewports and as you work in Maya you'll find uses for each of these. When you're modeling you'll probably stick to the wireframe menus and then as you get towards rendering you'll probably get into the shading and texturing options of those windows.